Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here as always. Yesterday we celebrated Star Wars Day, but today is Revenge of the Fifth. Now the set we're looking at today is 7151 Sith Infiltrator from 1999. It retailed for $30 and had 243 pieces. You're also able to pick it up the following year as part of value packs, one of which had Anakin's Pod Racer and the other had the Naboo Swamp sets. There might have been others, but those are the only two that I saw pictures of on Bricklink. I also don't know how much those uh, went for, because they both had uh, really big stickers on them that said 50% off the MSRP, which I assume was the combined total of the two sets. Um, if you wanted to pick this up on Bricklink, you can get the ship by itself in mostly complete condition for $25 and up. Uh, I did see one listing that had the box as low as $40. Uh, most of the listings that have the box are 70 or above. Um, if you want to get this sealed, they range between $100 and $300, but only two of those listings were above $200. Uh, they were mostly in the $1 to $175 range. This set came with a single minifigure, which is this Darth Maul, and he is actually available in four sets. Interesting enough, one of those sets is the 2007 remake of the Infiltrator. So they use the same figure on both those sets. Um, the, the Darth Maul figure, you can get them as low as about $2. Um, but there are 14 pages of listings for him. Most of them are between the $8 to $15 range, various states of where. Um... The very last page, page 14, uh, is when it hits $30, and it goes all the way up to 100 just on that page alone. But that is a wild price to pay for a minifigure that you can get for about $10 in a pretty reasonable condition. Uh, now that stats are out of the way, we're going to take a look at the set. Here, I also have the instructions, which are uh, well-loved. I wish I still had the box, but unfortunately... That has been missing for probably since I got the set, if, we're, if I'm being honest. Um, the first thing you can tell, it's quite blocky, which is pretty standard for the original Star Wars line. They didn't have very many pieces back then. Uh, the second most obvious thing is there's a judicious use of this blue color, um, which was definitely a design choice on their part. I'm not sure why they chose it. Uh, it's probably just to give it a little bit of pop. I do know that they used that blue on several other sets at that time. Um, oh, pardon me. We have pretty nice form factor on it, honestly. It is, you know, with what they were working with, pretty close to the original design of the ship. Um, you've got the long area there. You've got the little sort of like tie wings. Uh, there are no stickers on this. You do have three printed parts. You've got the view screen here, the top there, and then this very large printed piece back here. This is very good, and I'm glad it's in such good condition. Um, I am missing a couple parts. Uh, you see... I'm missing that one over here and here, and then I'm missing one of these. And then I'm missing one of the probe droid pieces. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, right here, you've got this hinge piece, and I don't know why they used red for it, because they have the dark gray, they've got light gray, they've got black, they've got green. I'm the yellow, I have yellow ones. I think they might have had white too, so it's an interesting choice for hinge color there. Um, you can also see a little bit of red there. Um, mostly it is the light and dark grays though. Uh, right here is a panel you can open and you have to take apart this lightsaber completely to put it right there. And this is where they store the probe droids, which is just a solid black minifigure head with the antenna piece on it. I am missing one of those heads, so imagine that third one is still complete. Um, 
then these do move, but they don't really do that in the movie at all. If anything, they should close more, but that is the limits of what you can have them down there. Uh, this back part also opens like this, and he has a little speeder bike in here. Now, the handlebars of this are supposed to be light gray, but I couldn't find that piece, so I just swapped it out with that one, and it works okay. Um, I got home from work at midnight, because we work nights, uh, on the 1st, and I was up until noon uh, putting this back together completely from scratch and organizing some parts and making videos, and that was a heck of a heck of a night just laser focus getting this put back together um and you know i'm only missing three pieces four pieces technically well five technically sort of um but hey you know you got to do what you got to do uh those are the play features i'll show you the bottom here there's kind of nothing down here has these as its landing gear, but that is it. That's all the play features on this. It's kind of simple. The design, or not design, the building process, you just start the nose and you just build your way back. Um, although I do think this might be sort of a play feature. I'm not sure. This all comes off. And then it looks like a TIE fighter. This is kind of funny. Um, I think that's just how they had those parts attached without having to have really long, thick pieces jutting out. Um, I'll show you the interior. I don't think I gave you a good view of that. Um, there's really nothing in there. There's even gaps and stuff, but it just holds this in place. It's all it's there for. Um, that's it for the features. I wanted to show you some stuff in the instruction manuals because back then they took a lot of care in making it kind of creative and stuff so there's actually a little comic back in here i want to show you guys these just two pages but it actually shows you well, actually, not two pages. There's another page after this. It shows you these alternate builds that they had in the comic. And then here they are made with the actual parts of the set. And then to finish off, you know, he gets his ship pieces back. And then here are the other two that he just used in that comic. And then I always love the, the alternate build pictures that they had on all the old boxes. And then something interesting is this came out when it was still branded as Lego System. And then you've got the classic Star Wars uh, Episode One logo there. It's really great. Um, I just watched The Phantom Menace in theaters yesterday. And it was a great experience. Um, it, I felt like an eight-year-old again. And building this set was pretty nostalgic. Um, but like I said, there is a 2007 version of this, which I have way over there, and I'll do a video on that eventually. And then this week, we just got the most recent version of it, which I am looking into picking up at some point. I just got the Interceptor, but we are going down to the Lego store tomorrow. And I might pick up something. I don't know. That Droidica is looking pretty sweet. I might pick it up. But we'll find out what I choose on a later date. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope this brought back a lot of good mem memories for you. Um, if you didn't have the set as a kid, you can run over to Bricklink and pick it up pretty cheaply. 
Um, and the de the price isn't that bad. You know, back when it came out, $30 was pretty typical for something. This is kind of a larger Star Wars set. 30 bucks, not too bad. Nowadays, something the physical size of this would run at least 60 bucks, 50 to $60. Um, you would have more pieces, of course. These are generally kind of large pieces, but I think the value's there. I mean, just nostalgia alone, it's, it's fantastic. And uh, I really like this set. Anyways, hit the like button, comment, subscribe. See you guys later. Bye-bye.